Hey yo, uh, sorry if there's some background noise in this video. Um, I just wanted to talk about two games that I've been playing recently. The first, um, Excite Truck and Metopia. Um, both these games, um, I've kind of always known about, but I never really gave a chance until the opportunity came, you know. For Excite Truck, um, I was trying to get more of the Wii games I didn't have, and Excite Truck, I owned the disc, but I didn't have the complete copy. And now I do, so that's cool. Oh my god, look at the back of this. Excite Truck on the surface looks very like a boring racing game. It's what it like. It looks like I don't think many people would pick this up off the shelf and be like, "Oh, that's a cool game." But in reality, it's actually really good. So the deal with Excite Truck is it is a 3D interpretation and sort of extreme version of Excite Bike for the NES. And the way that works is that it's a racing game where you can do tricks and that's like the main grading system. It's less about being first, even though that does help, and it's more about doing tricks. And there's a lot of cool tricks you can do, and with the Wii Motion, the Wii Motion, Wii Motion? And with the Wii Mote, it was a Wii launch title, so you use the Wii Mote to steer. And it actually works really well with the Wii Wheel. I never really used the Wii Wheel, but it helps a lot in this game. And it's just a really interesting experiment in using the Wiimote for like practical things, like kind of like Red Steel, but a lot more realized. There's lots of different cars and trucks and colors. There's this cool feature where if you have music on an SD card, you can play it while you're like listen to it while you're playing the game. So you can listen to anything basically, which is cool. <laughs> this was developed by Monster Games. They do a lot of racing titles. Um, um, later, they would end up doing a sequel to this game, Excitebots Trick Racing. They did Pilot Wings Resort for 3DS, and they did Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, the port for 3DS. I don't, and I think they're making like NASCAR games right now or something. They're not working with Nintendo as much. Yeah, um, this game has the temperature meter from the first game, so you can boost by holding plus. But not plus by holding the D-pad because you control the games like I'm steering with the Wii wheel. But you, if you do it too much, then you'll go. Um, then your vehicle will overheat. So you're trying to like balance going fast with not overheating. Like you can go in water. There's like a lot of shortcuts and stuff. It's pretty extreme. Getting the tricks is just like it's so cool. I really enjoy um, that element of it. Um, ring challenges. There's some challenges I haven't really tried yet. Um, I've played this game a lot. It's really addicting and fun. It's one of the launch titles for the Wii, as I've said before. And I, th I think the Wii's launch lineup was really solid when it comes to Nintendo's first party offerings. Because you had this game, um, Wii Sports, which is a classic, and Zelda Twilight Princess. This was really that, like, I feel like the two games is, like, fine. But they, this is, like, a middle ground. Like, Wii Sports was that casual game. Twilight Princess was that hardcore game, and this is a little bit of both. I feel like most people can get enjoyment out of this game. Yeah, there's not much to say, it's just a nice title. And it's like, kind of trashy in a fun way, you know? Like, you're bracing trucks and shit, doing tricks. It says Monster Games on the bumper of the tr some of the trucks. I don't know if you can see there, which is appreciated. Get excited. That's the tagline. The next game is an RPG that I own to um, both versions of. It was originally released on the 3DS. Um, I did not play this version at all. I owned it, but I never tried it out because um, I just never got around to it. I really was a, wanted to try it. I was, um, it was definitely on my radar before because I love Tomodachi Life. And I was only really pushed to play it when the Switch version came out. Looking at the back of the box, it's just kind of interesting how they deal with, like, the format. Like, the squares versus being, like, long. <laughs> I know no one cares about that. Um, I'm just gonna just take a look at this box right for a second. They add a horse on the bottom, because that's, like, the new feature for this version. But Miitopia is basically an RPG where you play it with Miis. So... It takes an idea of like character creation from other RPGs and adds the 
sort of fun, casual flair of the Miis to it. Which, given how most RPGs are kind of boring, if, um, it adds an element that takes a boring game and makes it more interesting because it makes it, it's customizable. It's almost like a Mad Lib, if you think about it that way. Um, this version has... This version has a lot of makeup options, which means that you can basically make a me that, of, that looks like anything. Um, I have one of Mr. Box, one of Pee Pee, the stuffed animal. Um, a lot of characters, and it's really, it's a great time. Um, this game has a lot of problems. It's very simple, um, very repetitive. Um, the battles are automated, which makes it so it almost feels like you're wasting time when you're playing the game. And it's way too long. It's like 30 hours for some reason when this easily could have been like 20 or 15. And, though, bar and barring those issues, which are kind of major, but like, this is more about just seeing fun situations. It's less about being a fun game and more about being a fun simulation of sorts. It's a very weird title. Um, this is not the follow-up Tomodachi life you would expect, but... I like it that they went in a different direction, you know. Um, it's a good game. I like it a lot. But um, this Switch port is fifty dollars when the original was forty. It's it's at least it's not sixty, you know. The graphics are way better. I remember from the first game, um, the two forty p like um, really didn't help, and I remember it looking kind of bad, or at least like everything looked like very choppy. I I don't know how to explain it. Um, a lot of this game was made up of, like, it almost looked like low-res PNGs for, like, textures and stuff. And it kind of worked in Tomodachi Life, but it's less excusable here because there's less, like, the, the objects, you see them, the same ones more often. But this game is extremely clean. They they polished it to a sheen. Grezzo um, fixed this game up. They did the Zelda remakes for 3DS and the Link's Awakening remake. So those guys really know their stuff. Um, yeah, it's a good game. Would I pick it up now? If you played the 3DS version, I would, and already played it, um, I'd say no. But if you're like me and you like kind of knew the 3DS version, knew it would, it would be something you would get something out of, but never played it, then maybe I think it would be time to strike if it's on sale, because fifty dollars is a little steep for this game. Um, I got it because. I wanted a slight deal on something else, and I needed to buy a um, new game, and this was one of the only ones I hadn't already played on Switch, because most of the Switch's library is ports and stuff. But, yeah. Cool. So that's what I've been playing recently. I've also been... I've also been continuing Sonic Lost World and such. The game, Sonic Lost World, kind of petered out at the fifth world. Got kind of bad, but it's okay. It's okay. Sorry about the background noise again. It's on control. 